money, money, and many, money in many situations can actually um, increase the sensitivity to to the lack of se uh, self. How so? Because you know, you would think. First of all, I was so busy working. By the time I was 33, I think I 31 or 32, some somewhere in there. One day I looked up, I'm like, oh wow, I got a million dollars. You, you don't make, nobody makes a million dollars, right? You accumulate. Yeah, if you're shooting for a million, you won't get there, right? You accumulate. One day you're like, oh, I got a million dollars in a bank account. That's what makes a millionaire. Everybody's gonna, become, everybody's gonna make a million dollars. You make 50 grand a year for 20 years, you, you made a million dollars. You know, but accumulating a million dollars. Now I got a million dollars, I'm like, damn, this is nothing. Which is like terrifying. There's a line in Wall Street where Bud Fox says, I never knew how poor I was until I started making a little bit of money. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I remember I, I made, I, one year I made 650 grand. The guy looked at me. I, I was telling somebody, I said, I made 600 grand this year. And he's like, how do you live on that? <laughs> I said, true. excuse me? He said, how do you live on that? How do you make sense of your like, potential at that? And w are you bragging or complaining? He's like, I'm confused. And I'm like, fucking thank you so much. See you later, I gotta get back to work. Cause it was a wake up call, man. I'm like, oh wow, what's available out there? Is that a real estate guy? Uh, that guy was actually not, he was a, he was a, he was a, a New York okay. Wall Street banker guy. You said you might've gone into Wall Street if you did, had to do it all over oh, again. Oh, without a doubt. Okay. Yeah, and without, I would definitely do like a hedge fund or, you know. Because it scales and there's tons of opportunity yeah, and there's things happening there. Yeah. Okay. But you went five years into sales and perfecting these techniques, and you got into real estate because you wanted a place to put your cash and put your instruments, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so the the first business was uh, the first business was me going out talking to companies. I was cold calling them businesses around America in the major cities, saying, "Hey, I have another way to sell things. I want to show it to you. I want to. Sh I just want to try it out with your staff and see what happens." And that are you that good on the phone now? Are you getting pretty good? I'm doing, I'm doing on the phone. And you're pretty good. I'm saying I'm gonna be in town, I'm coming to town. Okay. And they don't know who I am. I have no name, I hadn't written any books, I have no creds, nothing. Okay. Hey, my name's Grant, I'm coming to town, I'd like to meet you, I'd like to show you something. I'm not interested, click. I'd still go see the guy. So I started building, that's when I really became a salesperson. I'm 31, 31 to 33 years old, and I'm, I'm banging the phone three days, and then I show up in a city. Okay, that's what makes a salesperson because it's cold calling and then showing up. It's and a cold call the door. followed up by a visit. Hey, I was I called you the other day. You told me not to come by. Appreciate what you said. I just want to introduce myself. And the reason I'm in town, and then I'd go into my pitch, and I'm like, I'm going to have an event here two weeks from now. I'm not interested. I know you're not interested. How could you be? You don't have enough information to be interested. Like that's where I learned to sell. Okay. It wasn't the five years before that. Okay. Like now, now I'm learning how to produce a lead how to create interest, you know, how to keep interest, how to persist in a cycle, how to hit a deadline, because every one of these events was two weeks later. Right. So but you need a deadline. I'm fun, okay, absolutely. I need a tight deadline. Right. You know, we were talking about the webinars earlier before the, the interview, and, and, and so every, I learned how to do everything in very tight timelines, where most people take, we just did an event, uh, 20, 2,200 people showed up. We marketed the entire event for 77 days. From start from idea to close of event was 77 days. Nobody does that. Most people take a year to do that event. Okay. So we did a, a 9,000 person event in under nine months. So nobody hits these kind of targets. So what I was learning, what I didn't know back at 30 years old was I was learning about the value of time, man, and, and pressure. And that had become literally like what has made my little thing here or things, whether it's real estate or, I, I'm, I'm off track from your question, but. Oh, this is but, good. So but the value of time, meaning compression you, can, of time. you can get much more in there than you think. Oh my God. Like okay. I get more done in a day than anybody I know. All right, and by doing that, you're even much more effective. You're, well, well, yeah, I mean. Your I, sales is more effective and you're just compressing everything. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, time is money, right? If time is money and I'm compressing things, so a guy told me, he's like, I said, he, he said, I said, who, who do you think works harder, me or you? He's like, oh, he, he does. He's, he's convinced he works, he works harder than any person in the world. It's right? Gary Vee. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, uh, me. I said, yeah, but, good, but who gets more done, dude? Who monetizes more faster? Th these are the bigger questions, not who works harder. It's who puts the branches and the pecans 
and the leaves in the bag without making the biggest mess. Like that, that is what a business is. It's not about making a mess or doing a bunch of work or looking all raggedy ass at the end of the day. It's how much can you get done with time?